Hey, what's up YouTube? In this problem, we're going to solve this differential equation using Laplace transforms. Let's use Laplace transforms to solve this bad boy. So we have an initial value problem, and here we have two initial conditions. So the very first step when solving these DEs um, is you take the Laplace transform on both sides. We need to take the Laplace transform of this differential equation. Now be warned, um, I did pick a harder problem for this video, so this is a little bit tougher. Differential equations can be hard. So we'll start by taking the Laplace transform of both sides. So here we have the Laplace, y double prime, minus the Laplace, y prime. And you can do that because the Laplace transform is a linear operator, right? It distributes like that. If you're allowed to do that. And here you have the Laplace of e to the t cosine t. Now let's, I feel like we should resolve this a little bit here. Um, to take the Laplace of this, some people memorize the formula. Um, the way I do it is I use the, the shifting theorem, the first shifting theorem. So whenever you have uh, an exponential function in front of another function, you can drop it and replace it with a shift. So this is equal to the Laplace of cosine t. And then the shift is from s to s minus whatever number is in front of the t. So in this case, there's a 1 here, so it's s minus 1. Okay? So if there was a 3 here, it'd be s minus 3. If there was a negative sign here, it'd be s plus 1. Uh, and then to finish this, this process, just keep in mind um, the Laplace of cosine t. So what is that? I'll erase this, but I'll write it for now. If you have the Laplace of cosine kt, cosine has the s, right? So this is s over s squared plus k squared. So in this case, it's s over s squared plus 1 squared, which is 1, right? 1 squared is 1. And the shift is from s to s minus 1. And the last thing to do here maybe is replace the s with s minus 1. So this is s minus 1, and then s minus 1 squared plus 1. So we've completely resolved uh, that right-hand side. So again, step 1, you take the Laplace transform of both sides. When you get here, you can use the first translation theorem. It's also called the first shifting theorem. Basically, whenever you have an E in front of something you're trying to take the Laplace of, you can just drop the E, right, and then you can replace it with S to, in this case, it's a 1, so it's S minus 1. And then, just remember, cosine has the S, so you have the S there, and then now you just plug in S minus 1 for all the S's, and we're here. Over here, over here, there's a formula you have to use. So the formula, the way I memorize it is, when it's a second derivative, it starts at S squared. So it'll be S squared, pitchfork Y of S, minus s y of 0, minus y prime of 0. So how I memorize the rest of that? Ah, well, the way I do it, I don't know if this is the best way, is whenever there is a, a, a second derivative here, I know it ends up one less derivative. So this is the second derivative. This is the uh, first derivative. This was the third derivative. This would be a second derivative. Minus, this is going to be two terms. This is s y of s minus y of 0, little y of 0. And um, notice it's the zero with derivative. The original function can be thought of as the zero with derivative, right? This is the first derivative, this is the zero with derivative. Again, is that the best way to memorize it? I don't know. I always try, I, it works for me. <laughs> now we use our initial conditions. That's the cool thing about Laplace transforms, right? Is you get to use the initial conditions early in the problem, whereas normally in other methods, you use them at the very end to find your constants. But with Laplace transforms, you find them like, like right away. It's pretty cool. Um, they're all zero, which is fantastic, right? It's really good. So this is going to be zero, this is going to be zero, and this is going to be zero. Great stuff. So this is s squared, pitch for y of s, minus s y of s. And then we have all of this stuff over here. So I'm just, I'm just going to write it a little closer, just so it looks better. So this is s minus 1, s minus 1 squared plus 1. Just, brought it, just drag it over, right? Drag and drop. Too bad we don't have those powers on, on boards. We have to solve for pitchfork y of s now, okay? So what you do, I guess, and this, oh, look, you can pull out an s also. Let's do that. Look, you can pull out an s and a pitchfork y. By the way, that's an s. I should have told you that long ago. That's a cursive s, a lowercase cursive s. The reason I do that is because of this. 5s, right? <laughs> that causes a lot of trauma in math after a while. So I, I typically use um, lowercase cursive s's when, when I do Laplace transforms. And I use pitchfork y's, because if I just use big y, it causes some, some confusion, for me at least. 
So this is S minus 1, right? Pulling out the S, Y of S from both pieces. Then over here we have S minus 1, S minus 1 quantity squared plus 1. Now we can divide everything by S minus 1, right? And then, um, and then divide by S also, we get pitchfork Y of S equals 1 over S. And then here we have S minus 1 squared plus 1. All we have to do to finish the problem is find the inverse Laplace of this Y. Why is that true? It turns out that this is the Laplace of Y. Right? That's what this is. So you start the problem by taking the Laplace transform of both sides. You use a bunch of stuff, right? And then you solve for the Laplace of Y. And what you do is think about it like this. The Laplace takes Y and sends it to this. So the inverse function takes this, blah, and sends it back to y. So if the Laplace takes y, it gives you this. The inverse takes this and sends it back to y. So it undoes it. So we basically find the inverse Laplace of this, and then we're done with the problem. So to do this, I'm going to write this as follows. 1 over s. And let's multiply this out. So when you multiply s minus 1 squared out, you square the first one, so you get s squared. You multiply these and you double them, right? So it would be uh, negative s times 2, so minus 2s. Then you square the last one, so you get 1. So you're going to get 1 when you square the last one. But there's another 1 here, OK? So you get 1 plus 1, so you get 2. OK, so skip some work there. All right, so now we can use partial fractions on this. So pitchfork y of s is equal to 1 over s. I'm going to write it again. s squared minus 2s plus 2. And that's equal to a over s, right? because that's a linear factor, plus bs plus c all over s squared minus 2s plus 2. So s squared minus 2s plus 2. All right, I'm running out of room, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to erase the original problem because we don't need it anymore. All we have to do is find a and b and then find the inverse Laplace of this. And that's, that's the hard part. I said this was a hard problem. It's coming up. So feel free to fast forward through all of this if you want to get to the really tricky part. So I'm just going to erase this and just write this again up here. Good stuff. All right, so I'm going to write it again up here. So we have 1 over s s squared minus 2s plus 2, and that's equal to a over s, so a over s, plus, and then bs plus c over that, so bs plus c over that. So whenever you have a quadratic, you have to write the uh, bs plus c. So now we're going to use just regular partial fractions. So we're going to multiply both sides by this, okay? So when you multiply the left side by that, it cancels and you just get 1. Again, we're multiplying both. Let me go ahead and write it. Why not, right? We have room. Multiplying both sides by, by this. So s squared minus 2s plus 2. Beautiful stuff. So then a over s times, times oops, I forgot the s. And I forgot, yeah, there it is. There's the s. <laughs> so what happens here is the s is canceled. You see that? The s is canceled, so you get a. And then you're left with s squared minus 2s plus 2. Plus, and then bs plus c. All right, so partial fractions. So the ultimate strategy for partial fractions is the following, OK? You always, no matter what, the easiest way to do it is as follows. Plug in numbers that make things go away. So can we do that in this problem? Yes, yes, we can, right? We can plug in 0, and it'll make all of this go away, and we'll get A. So you do that until you can't do it. After you've done that as much as you can, then you resort to what's called equating coefficients. So that's the general strategy always for partial fractions. You plug numbers in until things go away, and you just do that until you can figure out the problem. And if you can't, when, you, when there's nothing else you can plug in, you use equating coefficients. It's another method. In this problem, we'll get to see both. So now we're doing the plug-in. You can plug in 0. What's that mean? Nothing. I just put a little funny bracket there. So you get 1 equals all of this goes away. So you just get 2a. And all of this goes away because it's all 0. Therefore, a is 1 half. I'm going to do this and just put a little one half here. Boom. Now, there's nothing else you can plug in to find stuff. So you have two choices here. You can plug in two other numbers and find b and c, or you can use the way the pros do it. Find the pros do it like this, right? So we're going to equate coefficients now. So we start with the highest degree terms. We start with the s squared terms. This is so important. This is so useful. This is like life. On the left hand side, we're looking at the coefficient of s squared. In this case, there is no s squared, right? So it's 0 s squared. So the coefficient of s squared on the left-hand side is 0. On the right-hand side, it looks like it's 1 half, right? 1 half plus b, right? Plus b. Oh, beautiful stuff. So b is negative 1 half. 
That is just math. That's mathematics. It's one of the nicest techniques in mathematics, just equating coefficients. For some reason, it's just... So again, you start with the highest degree terms. In this case, it was s squared. On the left-hand side, the coefficient of s squared is 0. On the right-hand side, it's 1 half and then b. So 1 half plus b, then you solve for b. Let's look at s terms. See, on the left-hand side, the coefficient of s squared, well, it's not there, it's 0. Over here, ooh, hoo, hoo, gotta be careful. 1 half times negative 2, so negative 1s, so negative 1, and then here we just have c. That means that c is equal to 1. All right, so we have a, b, and c. So now I'm going to go ahead and plug everything in. So um, recap. So first thing we did was we wrote the partial fractions down. We multiplied by all of this stuff. The s is cancel. You're left with this. This cancels. You're left with s. When you get to this step, you ask yourself, what can you plug in that makes things go away, right? So zero, right? Zero makes things go away. We, we did that. We found a, right? We found a. Then there was nothing else that would immediately give us one of the other variables. So then you resort to equating coefficients. We look at the s squared terms. The coefficient here is 0. The coefficient is 1 half. The coefficient is b. 1 half is b. Boom, there it is. And you solve for b. Then you go down to s. S terms, the coefficient is 0. It's not really there, right? There it is, but it's not really there because it's 0. The coefficient is 0. The coefficient is negative 1, right? Negative 1. Super tricky. And the coefficient here is c. Then you solve. So you have all your answers. I'm going to erase this and plug these things back in here. So, so we have, we have pitch work y of s is equal to, let's see, so a is 1 half. So we're putting a 1 half, we're putting it up top, right? When you put it up top, you can pull it out front. So 1 half times 1 over s. And then now b is negative 1 half, so plus negative 1 half s. And then c is 1 plus 1. And then this, we knew what this was before. This was, I believe this was s minus 1 squared plus 1. That's a more convenient way to write it for what we're about to do. Okay, so now... This is the hard part, right? We have to find the inverse Laplace of this. So we want to write this in a way that we can figure it out. So this is equal to 1 half times 1 over s. We can figure this out. The inverse Laplace of that is easy. No problems there, right? So then uh, we just have to figure out uh, this. So it would be really nice, here's the key step, if this was s minus 1, because then we could do a shift, right, and figure out the problem. But it's not. It's negative 1 half s plus 1. So what we do, okay, what we do is we make it what we want it. So we write down this minus 1. You may say, what? You can't do that. Breaking the rules. That's right. It's all about breaking the rules and just do, you know, making up for it later. So this is wrong, right? This is not correct yet. So how can we make it correct? So again, you write down what you want and you fix it later. That's a key idea. It's central to all of mathematics. So you write down what we wanted. And now there's a negative 1 half s here. So we have to put a negative 1 half here. Okay, so now it almost matches, right? Now, now we're almost there, right? We're almost there. So we have negative 1 half s. And then here we have negative 1 half times negative 1. That's positive 1 half, right? That's positive 1 half. So how do we get from 1 half to 1? We add 1 half. So plus 1 half s minus 1 squared plus 1. Again, again, you first write down what you want. Okay, you write down what you want. You say, okay, this has to be the same as this. So the negative 1 half, that has to be there. So you write it down, right? So there it is. There's a negative 1 half, right? Okay, so you have negative 1 half s. Then negative 1 half times negative 1 is positive 1 half. So you have a 1 half. And the question is, how do you get from 1 half to 1? You add 1 half. All right, now we're in a good place. Now we can take the Laplace trans, the inverse Laplace, and that will give us y. So we have y equals, and we can take the inverse Laplace of each piece. So it's 1 half, inverse Laplace, 1 over s. Okay, minus one half inverse Laplace of this. I'm gonna go ahead and do the shift now. So this is gonna be s, s squared plus one, and we're doing a shift from s to s minus one. That's the inverse of the first translation theorem we're using there, right? So it's the same thing. We just took the inverse Laplace and did the shift a little bit early, plus one half, and again, inverse Laplace. Again, we'll do the shift a little early, one over s squared plus one. And I hope you can still see the shift is from s to s minus one. I'll come, I'll come back this way. Um, so this is going to be a cosine, and this is going to be a sine, right? So we have y equals 1 half, and I'd say, well, what's, what's, the, uh, what's the inverse of loss of, of 1 over s, right? should just be t, right? should just be uh, t. t. Uh, the, no, no, it should just be 1. That's it. It's just 1, right? The Laplace of 1 is 1 over s. It's just 1. So just 1 half, so 1 half minus 1 half. 
This is a cosine, and then, so it's cosine t, and then whenever you use the shift here, right, whenever you use this shift, um, you're going to get uh, an, an e, and then to the t in this case, so times e to the t, right? Your a is 1, so it's e to the at plus 1 half. And then here, this is a sine, right? It's a sine because it doesn't have the s. And again, it's also an e to the t. Right? So whenever you do the shifts like that, um, you get those e's at the end, right? So if it was like s minus 2, you would get an e to the 2t, right? If it was s plus 2, you would get an e to the negative 2t. So that's it. Uh, kind of a, a, of a long problem. Um, I hope it made sense. That's it.